Okay, everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at a, a little portable generator. Uh, I don't know if this is one of those Harbor Freight ones or not. Uh, it just says portable generator. And it's a, a storm cat. Uh, picked this up at the auction. Uh, this one, I think I paid $32.50 for it. Now, you might think that that's a lot, but probably is, <laughs> probably too much. But we need, uh, I need some, some portable, or some handhelds and some stuff over at the, over at the market. And I haven't even looked to see what the, you know, what these sold for, or what they're selling for. To, until we figure out if it's if it's worth fixing or if I spent too much money and I lost all my money, uh, I don't have to, then it would go into a parts parts area or stash or whatever. Okay, we have our choke. Uh, that should be the yeah on off. And, and our little, oh, this is a 800 uh, watt rated, 900 max, two horsepower, two stroke engine that's in this. And it, it does feel really good. Feels like she's got really good compression, but this is how I bought it spark plug wire hanging off of it and spark plugs loose so I'm probably I'm guessing well, that's an awful bono bon on that's not a Chinese plug is it <laughs> But first thing we need to do is, since we have, since this was, spark plug was loose and spark plug wire was off, I am going to say that it is, has a no spark. Let's see if we can get this guy to, that's plastic, that bolt there. Let's see if we can see anything. We're going to look right down in there. She's got spark. Hmm. Let's, let's try that again. I can hear, hear it snapping off on that bolt, too. Yeah, it's got spark. So we have spark. Looks like somebody has ripped that wire, spark plug wire, out of there. And it was hanging out. Let me get. See if we can get him out of there. Uh huh. That should be should have should hook on one side and pierce down through the other side. And here. Spark a doodle boot goes on. Like so. Let's see if that helped us out for a little better spark. Look right, right down there. Oh yeah. 
Nice little fine blue spark. Plug's a little dirty. Looks like it was running pretty good. You know, it's not all carboned up, not all covered with oil. Mm -mm. Okay, now what we need to do is run a compression check on it, and just for for gits and shiggles, and we'll see if uh, see how our compression is on this. That'll tell us pretty much, you know, the how long this has been used. A lot of these little generators uh, don't get used a whole lot. Uh, mainly what happens to them is they just get cruddy. Carburetors get all gummed up and with today's gas it's it really really tears everything up in the carburetors, fuel lines and all that. And so and it looks like it's gonna be fun to find a carburetor on this. So let me go get my compression tester. We'll run a compression check on it and see how our compression is on it. And that'll, like I said, that'll tell us a lot about the unit. Okay, I picked up another, another compression tester at the sale. And this will be a perfect opportunity to see if it works. And we can... can test the good one or the new one too and see how see how accurate the two of them are to each other she won't sit there I need to find a good place to set this so you can see it can you see it up there can you see it up there in the shitty seats how about that eh kind of Let's see, we need to move the gas can first. Let's see, we want to choke off. Engine on, off, let's see, that I think that's choked and that's off, or is it the other way around? No, nope, that should be off. But we'll find out. Ah, Ninety five, let's see, one twenty, looks like about one, one twelve. 112 to... it's not... yeah, about 112. Okay. There's that one. Now we'll see with this brand new one. Let's see how close they are to one another. Alright, now let's try this new one. Let's see if I can... I'm dragging everything all over the place. Yeah, about 110. So they're close enough. So I can use either one. And I know it it's going to work. That just gives me an extra one that I can have around. Okay, now... Uh, what do you want to do? 
Uh, I bet you'd like to hear it run. I know I would. Let's put a little gas down the cylinder and see if it'll run. Okay, I just use these kind of they're kind of a squeeze bottle for like mayonnaise or something. Oop, might be a little too much. has a has a fuel shut off right here and it is off I did make sure of that ah. even has a cup for measuring your oil screen Doesn't it smells fresh? Mm-hmm. Smells like it was just put away. But you know if we go through and if we don't clean the carburetor, we're gonna be tearing it apart to clean the carburetor anyway. So let me gather up some tools, I'll get you set up in the right position, and we'll see if we can get back in here to, to that carburetor. Hmm, this should be our air filter down here, which I probably should have looked at first before we tried to see if it would start, see if it would run, make sure there's nothing living in it. No filter. Ah, there it is, yep. Just a little little funky film foam filter. And I'm going to bet that this is all metric. I didn't bring anything with me. simple fact I didn't know what we were going to need and I'm not going to bring the whole toolbox yep that's 10 yep so let me go grab a 10 millimeter socket okay brought the extension in case we need it that's two on the carburetor and then there's one back here on the panel that holds the panel. So I'm thinking that whole panel has to come off. So you can get at the carburetor. And there's going to be some wires. Okay, I can just get my hand in here. There's Somebody's been in here. We need to get those two two push-on terminals for the kill switch. And they have silicone covers on them. Okay. 
There's that. Okay, what else is holding this up? We have, oh, that's for the, uh, the wire right here. For the breaker. Not, I can't get you in here anyway. You're not going to see much. It's, uh, I'll show you if I can, if I get it and get the wires off of it. There we go. You can see. See, you have your on off. You have your on off switch here. You have those two wires that you need to take off, and then you have these two, which is the breaker. This, this little guy right there. And now, we can get to that carburetor. Everything first before Let's see how it if it's bolted. No, that one should just looks like it just slides on those studs. for our throttle which is actually on this is just governor there's a little little bitty spring That's the easiest. Okay, I give up. Doesn't have a clip on it. Nope, just Z bands. Looks like you're supposed to take the whole reed valve assembly out of it in order to get it out far enough to. get your uh, throttle rod out of it because you can't because <laughs> you can't pull it out far enough can't pull it out far enough to to get it past your studs here and I hate taking that off but that's probably the only way we're gonna be able to 
get that carburetor off. Like I said, you know, if we don't pull this off and clean it, we're going to be pulling it off later. Don't know how long it's been sitting. The gas, what little bit is in the in the tank itself, smells smells good. Smells like you know, like gas, not not. 30 year old varnish now hopefully we don't ruin a gasket See, she's got some oil in her. So she may have been laying her, sitting around flooded. And that may have been a problem with it. Let's see, this two cycle. This two-stroke has reed valves in it. Instead of ported cylinder, this has the reed valves in it. It's a, like a one-way door. When when it's uh, pulling in on your intake stroke, these will open up and draw fuel in and charge the crankcase. If you're not familiar how a two-stroke works, on the upstroke what it does is the cylinder is sealed off and the crank and you have your crankcase when the cylinder when the pistons going up what it does is it's drawing in through here and pulling gas in to the crankcase then when the piston goes all the way to the top when it comes back down what it does is it forces that charge up to the top of the cylinder and then forces it up to the top of the cylinder and then as it goes back up it's drawn in again plus it fires when it goes all the way up okay let's see what this carburetor has in store for us for oil little cruddy in there ooh ah uh, yeah it's a good vintage too somebody put gas in it to see if they could get it running before they took it to the auction yeah she's a little a little crusty Well, at least the little little rubber tip on that is is good. Uh, let's, this is the main jet right here. This just has a hole through it. 
Ooh, man. Yeah. Just has a hole through that as your jet. What else? Uh, that's our low end. I don't know if I can get him out of there. And you have to take the the idle out of it f before you can get the. Boy, that's not very tight either. Uh. So it, it's been sitting for quite a while. Looks like maybe a lot of the gas may have went down through the. Oh shit, that's not. That plastic cap's not doing anything but spinning. So it's preset, and you're not supposed to be able to adjust your idle. Okay. Now let's. Let's go with one, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. So it's about four and a half to five because I think I screwed up when I first. Hmm. Can we? Get down on that now. What's that? Yeah. be low okay that's about all there is to it now I need to get him all cleaned up and get rid of the stink so we can probably should put a little gas in it and run it through run it through that valve and hose and all that and see if we can't clear some of the other crap out of it okay got the, got some gum out that emulsion tube no I'm not even gonna try and get him out of there Normally, I don't, I don't put them in the ultrasonic if they're, you know, like this. Just had a old, old gas in them. I mean, I know it would clean the, clean the green off of it, <laughs> clean the oil out of it. But if they're if they're still fairly clean, you know, like this one was, it just had a lot of old gas in it. I just use the, the gum out and get them cleaned up. I know putting them in the ultrasonic cleaner would clean it, you know, a lot more. And it would take off all this old crap. But 
but I hate firing up the ultrasonic cleaner just for a little bit of stuff that we need to do here to this one. This is the one we really need to get clean. You don't have to have an ultrasonic cleaner to clean a carburetor. Had a little bit of mud down in it. Not bad though. Mainly just some old oil residue and some stink. Alright, now I'll get rid of this crap and we'll be ready to put her back together. Now what happens to these a lot of times is people buy them because they think they need a generator and they fill it up and they use it or never use it. And fill it up with gas and then put it in the garage and yep, it'll be ready when we need it. And then they never need it, or they need it, and it won't start because it's been sitting with old gas in it. So a lot of times, generators, they don't have a whole lot of hours on them. Or if somebody bought it, you know, to do a job, they just needed to take it out in the woods and... Take it out in the woods and work on their tree stand or something. And they use it once and then it goes home, gets sits in the garage and never gets used again. Alright, what I like to do is I like to blow through these after I get my needle and seat in. You can blow through it with the with it hanging down. And you can't blow through it when the float's closed. Oh, uh, let's see, we need this. Let's see, that's the front. Is there a 
place probably going to be off to the side a little bit so you can sneak in behind the behind the case or the that panel and get your screwdriver on it and drain your bowl if you need to So there's not much to these. Not when you have a set jet in them for your top end and your your idle. The only time these idle is when you first you know you first start them up, and if you don't have a load on them, they should sit there and just idle. And then when you put a load on them, you know, you plug something into them, then they, they take off. And it'll take it up to the high speed, which we shouldn't have to mess with because it was nothing wrong with it. Okay, now our low end, our idle, we're going to go one and a half, one, one and a half. Two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half. Hopefully we can get in there if it... I'm not even going to put him on there in case we do need to... to do something. Okay, carburetor's ready. Now, what I want to do is I want to put some a little bit of gas in this. And put a little bit of gas in it. Let me get you, pick your head up a little bit. There you go. And I'm going to our our on off yeah go ahead just throw it on the ground and this is 50 to 1 premix kind of hard to want to put too much into it Probably a dollar I just put in there. Okay, fuel is on. There. We'll run it a little bit until it's. Yep. Just wanted to rinse out the. A little bit of crud come out with it. much but it sure smells a hell of a lot better okay, now we're ready to put our carb back on Got gasket there. Like so. Look. Upside down. Try that. That looks better. Linkage put back on, and now let me 
you know, fight with this little bitty spring. being so damn difficult. You probably can't even see much anyway. Let me... Let me lower you down a little bit. give you much room to work with not on these compact little guys Okay, let's see. We had gasket. Okay, that's, <clears throat> like I said, I don't have much, I didn't put much gas in it. We will tilt that forward a little bit, turn on some gas. Let it 
fill the bowl up and see if we get any drippy drippies. Drippy drip. Now we can get our let's get our control panel put on. These are the dang them are short. Okay, I will. You're not going to be able to see much that I'm doing anyway. So I'll, I'll go ahead and get those wires on there and our kill switch. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, you sure don't want to have to be taking that front panel off too many times. That's kind of a pain in the butt to get them wires back on. Hmm. I didn't think you really needed to watch me struggle. Okay, what do we got left here? We need to clean this plug a little bit. Clean some of the oil off of the plug. Now I'm not going to tighten it, the plug up all the way until after we make sure that it's going to run. Okay, fuel on, choke on, I like wax on.
Okay, got her working. She runs good. Took a little while for it to warm up before it would actually, you know, stay running with the choke all the way off. But there was an awful lot of oil inside of it. You've seen it burning quite a bit. Our little aspirator screen is still still clear, so it didn't uh, pick up too much carbon. But all I need to do now is get her cleaned up. Uh, She's been sitting over here for about an hour and a half. I wanted to finish this up before the sun got all the way over. But I didn't. Got tied up doing some other things. But she's all... She's not dripping and the gas was left on. So looks like we're good there too. So I'll get it cleaned up and then we will finish up on it. Okay, cold start. It's been sitting out here all day. I had to wait for the sun to go down. So I'm not out here in the sun. You've seen my la that last segment how how sunny it was. It's too bright. Make sure it's on. Up, yep, up is on. Got her all cleaned up, and now she's all ready to go. Uh, I took that blue film off of the 
gas cap that looks a lot better and just you know clean some dirt off of it you know, it's a little little faded from sitting outside and but I got her all cleaned up and now she is ready to be used by somebody else because I'm sure what's gonna happen is somebody's gonna buy it and then Oh, that's the ground. Somebody's going to buy it, and the same thing's going to happen. They're going to use it for for a little bit, or whatever job they need to do, and then it's going to go in the shed and sit there, and then it won't start, and it'll be back at the auction. <laughs> Which is fine. I did my part. I got it running. Got her all cleaned up, runs good, and generator part works on it. So it's ready. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I have more of this stuff coming up, uh, including uh, some weed eaters, hedge trimmers, blowers, chainsaws. So until next time, your battery's blinking. I'll see you on the next one. Okay, before we leave, I did check on this. Um, there was a couple places, uh, Harbor Freight, eBay, Amazon, all have this uh, Stormcat 800 watt for like 150 bucks. So I, I spent 32.50 for it. Uh, I'll probably start at $60 on it and see what happens from there. Okay, now we can go. See you on the next one.